Okay, this is it. I'm at the at the place in Quebec. Something called Angi Angi Gardien. Uh, so the broker was wrong, right? They gave me a wrong customs broker. They said it was Livingston. Turns out it was FedEx. I lost because of that. I said one hour. I said, I need 200 bucks an hour. I said, I'm gonna lose two hours. So I said, I wanted to pay me $200 per hour Canadian because this load pays in Canadian. So it's 400 bucks. And the guy like, oh, okay, you know, track your time. But then of course, by the time we were done, it was only one hour and I said, okay, forget it. Give me like 75 bucks or something. Yeah, okay. And I'm still waiting for the rate confirmation because it should be a revised rate confirmation. But you know, this is Canada. So Canada allows eight hours in the sleeper, right? And so I drove till eight and then I got up because it's not, it's not oversized, you know, come on. It's, it's legal, it's flush with my trailer. There's one piece of uh, timber, like those little planks they used to hook up to, you know, to hold in place the, the plastic screen on the side, like this much, like one of four My, you know, you know what? And so I got up at I got I got up at 3:15 in the morning today, boys and girls. So if somebody says that I'm lazy, they are wrong. And so I started driving as soon as my clock, like you know, I open my e-log and I check available hours zero, because it was still less than eight hours, right? And then as soon as the clock went past, uh, I think I um, I shut down at like seven seven forty. 7 45 you know quarter to eight on the night before and so you need you need to be at 3 45 to be able to start driving right and at 3 46 i check hours it says oh well you have uh 15 hours what is it 14 15 uh shift time and you have uh, 13 hours of driving beautiful and so i drove non-stop from uh no i yeah from what from uh, basically 10 to 4 to 10 past 8 because it's pretty far you know from I, I spend the night in Napanee by the way and so I look for the place they told me uh, the name of the place I don't see it I don't see the name it says something with like I see the name of the town for some reason they all have the name of the town this NG Guardian I have no idea how to pronounce that but uh, and so I called the bro and I went to inside and of course you are one hour one hour east of Montreal nobody speaks English like it's like you know it's the border with Montreal and civilization or English speaking you know um, and so I go inside the building there which says 170 that's what my paperwork says 170 agromax agromax is the name of my company on my rate confirmation, on my uh, bill of lading that the shipper gave me in Michigan, on my invoice, and uh, I don't see Agromax anywhere. And I, but I go inside the office where it says one seven zero. Some lady opens the window and I say, I say to her in English, of course, I said, "Do you know Agromax? I'm looking for Agromax," and she's she starts speaking in French. I'm not sure what the idea is when somebody's asking you in English, but they answer in French. Like if I knew French, I would probably ask the question in French. <laughs> so if the person is asking you a question in Chinese and we in Japan, right? Let's say chances are that person does not speak Japanese, right? Because he's asking the Japanese person. So in the same situation, I walk in, I'm asking a French lady, Quebecois. Quebec lady in English because I don't speak French she explains to me in French and the only word I understand was uh, gate for some reason she use is that English or is that they use uh, English word <laughs> basically go around that's what she was pointing go around the building gate <laughs> okay <laughs> you know half of the time you have to be a detective anyway but of course I don't drive my truck you know blindly hoping that there'll be a gate because you know i i'm i i cannot turn around if it's a, sh a small space like here see that's why i stopped here because i have no this parking you see that station amend i know that means parking and of course then you see all cars parked right 
and I'm not sure what this is for probably they're tying down some stuff in here when they're working on something tall and I see trucks in there you can go in there that's like uh, oh and there's another two words one is uh, like I know the word shipping like when I see them on the sign I know shipping and I know receiving and so over there it said shipping that's shipping I'm not shipping I'm I, ha I need receiving right and I don't want to go there uh, because the, the sh guard in the shack says oh go around the corner go around the curve you know he, he actually spoke some English because he, he can see I, I you know I'm not playing I don't understand what you're saying like oh curve go around curve there's an office okay but yeah I don't want to go I don't know what curve he meant this one I go there I'm stuck because it's pretty tight there uh, I go there I see some big trucks with some fuel tanks or something or some I don't know what it is like vegetable oil or something olive oil because agro right agro max that sounds like something agricultural but I don't want to go there unless I know for sure and so I called the broker and I said I call my freight broker I said so you gave me a wrong customs broker right I lost one hour there okay I said you gave me a wrong company I don't see agromax anywhere here and the guard actually when I showed the bill of lading to the guard he took my bill of lading and he took a pen and he started writing something on my bill of lading and turns out next to 170 he wrote 168 and then he says ru, 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 here I said wait but is it agromax or are you just correcting my building number he says yeah agromax amazing you know like if, if anything else can go wrong and now of course they're saying i'm too i'm i was too fast uh, i was last to load i'm first to arrive like all the other trucks that have parts for this they're nowhere to be found they probably took their own turn and they're, they're somewhere in texas dealing with texas dot you know those green uniforms uh, check out my video how to meet women in texas a uh, Texas uh, trooper gave me a ticket you know I stopped at the red light and she was hiding in the bushes like I swear uh, in an SUV like there's some vegetation here and it was sitting and she was watching who was talking on the phone <laughs> and, and I had my headset but you know it was still like a few years ago when that became law to use headsets and I still couldn't get used to them you know um, Sometimes you would push the mute button by mistake instead of answer and then people like what hey can you hear me I'm like what the heck is going on? and I'm at the red light right I stop at the red light I'm not driving I'm stopping and my phone rang and I pick up the phone and right away this lady comes out of the bushes like very pretty lady in this green uniform you know they all wear like this army kind of style army style A nice nice uniform you know they look like army you know and she came she came out i saw you using your phone i said i was parked no you were on the pavement she says if you were on the shoulder then yeah i said oh man and so she escorted me to the scale they scaled me they found some leaks uh on the engine this was in my international yellow international days and so i i, I did a movie called how to meet women in texas and that's if you know if if you into uh females in uniforms that's what you do just find a spot where you know they'll be in hiding and you get your phone and she'll come out to say hi you know it's that simple <laughs> of course it may not be a your lucky day and then instead of uh instead of a slender and beautiful marie you will you will you will have a 200 pound jack you know all right sir follow me you know then you don't want that adventure you know so so that's what's happening man i'm i'm tired that's why we're now off off the clock on the e-log and i did everything and i said hey i'm okay waiting so i called the broker i said i i don't i told you i don't speak french like he gave me a number my contact here of course you know this is not who bought these units right so these units have to be installed here so 
chances are so when they give you a contact it's the guy who'll be installing these right and and the broker says uh, and I said I try calling that number you gave me but it's all in French and usually they say something in English like for English press 9 you know like in in uh, in in Quebec English is kind of like a secondary language so you know ever everywhere else in the world they say for English press 1 in, as soon as you cross into Quebec, English becomes option nine on your phone. Like one is French. For French, press one or stay on the line. For for English, press nine. But here there's nothing. Like she, the greeting is all in French. She talks in French. I don't have this guy Marco. I thought it was his direct line. So I tried twice. I, oh, I, and then I heard zero, zero. So zero, right? Okay, I click zero maybe for customer service voicemail so i called the broker I said okay i understand you speak a little bit of french i said i need you to call him and tell me what's going on and he says well the thing is we were not expecting you this early he says uh, uh all other trucks are way behind you <laughs> and he says and i understand so if they need a crane to unload this they don't want to just get a crane and unload one truck right so they want to get a crane and unload all trucks and I said that's fine I said I can wait I just want my my paperwork to be signed and I, I actually sent it I sent him an email about this I said because tomorrow is Thanksgiving in the States and my fact my favorite uh, factoring company is half American and so they observe both Canadian holidays and American holidays and so if they unload me today let's say 12 o'clock one o'clock right that means that uh, i will not be paid today because i have to send the paperwork before 10 to get paid on the same day so that means that they will they will uh supposed to factor me tomorrow but tomorrow is a holiday in the states right and that means i won't see any money and today is thursday right Wait, what day is it today? Today is uh, Wednesday. Ah, okay. Well, maybe they would be back, back to work on 26th, which I doubt. So, you know, that's what I mean. So, if, if I don't get my paperwork signed now, then tomorrow is a holiday, and then it can be a long weekend, you know, 26th is Friday. So, I might not see my money until 29th of November which is not good so if I don't hear from the broker in the next few minutes I'm gonna I'm gonna call him again because I just need this guy to come out sign my paperwork and then I'm gonna drop the trailer because I know there's a, there's a, there's a truck stop there's a big truck stop right a couple of kilometers on the same road I took uh, to exit from uh, I-10 or Auto Route 10 what is it like 235 highway 235 and on the other side of 10 there's a big truck stop so i think they have a restaurant there so i might go and have some breakfast or brunch so this is what's going on so wrong broker wrong address oh and ask i asked the, i asked the free broker i said why i don't see that agromax name anywhere and he says well i think probably those are the people who bought this and I said don't you think it would be helpful to let the driver know this that basically you're not looking for agromax you're looking for something else so this is this is my first load from the Canadian load board you know I I never had so many problems uh, when I do a load from the American load board for some reason but this is my first load and uh, the broker is based in Quebec but they do have good credit so you know the rate was okay so I figured you know might as well make some money before the holidays because Thanksgiving is very you know iffy there'll be no loads usually like for two weeks you know but now it seems very busy because of after everybody's coming back to work after covid you know stuff like that they were just doing a interview on the radio 
with some people uh, talking about uh, you know if they're gonna be shopping for Thanksgiving and new, and new Year and everybody says yeah so they expect some record record numbers this uh, this season compared to last year but still less than before COVID started uh, 2019 but better than in 2020 so everything is going crazy right that's why they don't have these drive-in trailers anywhere people cannot buy drive-in trailers which now cost like 80,000 bucks nuts there's shortages of, of everything so So yeah, you can see by the trailer. So yeah, it's not definitely not fuel. It's something to do with with uh, agriculture. Anyway, I called that number again, and I recognized the greeting. She was saying this other company name that I saw on the signs everywhere, something with "e," uh, like like egg in French. I know it's "e." Uh. Um, and then she started saying something and now besides zero i recognize one and two in french and so i just punched one for something because she was saying i thought she would say a name but she said one but in french two or whatever and so i punch one and some lady answers the phone and i said do you speak any english and she's like perfect, flawless, no accent, you know. Oh yeah, of course I do. Bingo. I said, I'm looking for this guy, Marco. And I give her the last name. She says, we have many plans. Wh which address are you at? <laughs> so she's probably not here. She's somewhere in the central office. I said, this is the address. I'm in this NG Guardian. And she says, okay, hold on. Puts me on hold and like after five minutes, she says, I cannot, nobody knows that person. <laughs> I said, well, I have some, you know, those big air conditioning units. You guys know that you have a project maybe somewhere, maybe somebody knows where they're installing a bunch of air conditioning units. And then she puts me on hold again two more times and then she comes back with a name she says you need david but last name i forgot but it was like french name he's the site manager like a construction site manager and she's a, and she's she didn't give me the phone but she says i tried him on his cell on his main line nobody's answering so he must be walking around somewhere and my freight broker sends me an email saying they said uh, you'll be first they will unload you first uh, around 11 o'clock and that's not good enough um, and i do see some in the distance hold on yeah in the distance far far in the distance that big black object that now in the center of the frame see like this uh, there's that white shed and right next to white shed I see a couple of guys in safety vests and hard hats you see that now the guy's bent yeah now he's up he's doing something I was probably tying down his shoelace or something but he's standing now I can clearly see him and this phone, this Samsung phone is amazing. You see, I can I can do this. He's pulling something over there. Like the picture you see on the screen is pretty much what I see with my own eyes. You know, usually the field and the distance are totally different on a camera or on a phone, right? But because human eyes are much more resilient and much more powerful. But here actually I see, oh now I see now there's two guys in there. They're probably playing some dominoes or something. No, one guy went off to get a pizza. 
What do you want? Vegetarian or uh, all all meat? So I should probably go talk to them because I, I'm thinking that black structure, you see it has some uh, some metal siding over there. I think maybe that's where they're installing these AC units. But how would they drop them? That thing actually looks like a spaceship from the movie Alien, Aliens and Cowboys. Or Cowboys and Aliens. <laughs> except except it's much bigger. Okay, anyway, so my uh, my freight broker says they're trying to find me somebody. So you see, look, this phone, this is the wide. And that's the structure I was talking to this lady on the phone. She says, where are you? I said, well, I'm parked next to this weird structure, uh, like 25th century style. Oh, okay. And it's super powerful magnification on this phone. This is 10 times. This is three times. This is one. I'm guessing there's no magnification, and then this is 0 0.6. Well, the landscape changed a little bit, but that thing is still on my trailer, but they brought me here. They said this is where you're unloading. So it's probably going inside this building. Uh, oh, and you see that name. That's the name I was trying to remember. You see that? Only, only male or something? Only male? I don't know. And over there, that's that's uh, Auto Route 10. So we can do some truck watching over here. Wow, that guy went fast. <laughs> And somewhere there, but on the other side of the freeway, there's a, there's a truck stop. But of course, we have a communication problem here. So I asked the guys, I said, oh, and he sa I said, will I be able to get out? And he says, yeah, don't worry. He says, when you go like this, you can go, go around and basically come out on the other side. Because before I was parked over there, then I drove through shipping. Turns out there's a lot of space there. So yeah, what happened is that I grabbed my paperwork and I, I, um, I walked where I saw those construction guys, and I showed them the paperwork and I said, "You guys expecting any AC units?" I said, "Who is this guy, Marco? We cannot find him." And he says, "Oh, he's from the," and they're giving me a name of the construction company. So he says, they are the company that's doing the installation. So they know this guy. He says, he's, I said, who's David, the site, uh, the site manager? Oh, he's inside. So I said, so, but you know about this, right? And he said, yeah, 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 we can show you where they're going. So at least I found these guys. And I said, why I, I cannot find this guy, Marco? And he says, well, because they gave me the, ro the phone number for the plant, but that's why that lady that I talked to before, she could not find this guy Marco, my contact, because he doesn't work for this plant. He works for the construction company. But why would you give me a plant phone number? You know, it's like, it's like, imagine um, a broker says, a, uh, a shipper finds a broker and the broker says, yeah, we found uh, Sergey Drachev. You're gonna pick up your load. So your contact will be Sergey Drachev. Uh, call your local Walmart because usually he goes there to buy his, uh, you know, his five dollar pants. No, ten dollar pants. Ten dollar pants and five dollar t-shirts. So Walmart might 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 know where he is. So same deal here, right? So <laughs> they give they give me the phone number for the plant and like, what's the point? So you call them. Well, we don't know who this Marco is. Nobody knows this name. But anyway, I got it and I said, guys, could you? And they said, well, we didn't expect you so soon. And I said, well, that's, I said, I'm Russian. That's how we drive, you know. <laughs> and the broker now calls me outlaw. 
the broker says, hey, this is uh, Outlaw Sergey. I say, yeah. But no rules were broken when recording this video. And um, the, the, these two construction guys, I said, you work for the construction company? He says, no, we work for the plant. We kind of like lia do a liaison with this construction company. But they know about they dealing with the project. So I found the proper people. Actually, my Samsung phone helped me, you know, pinpoint them. But you see, I thought it was that location with that big black tower. Turns out, no, it's somewhere here in the back. Basically, I think what what's going to happen is they're probably going to bring the crane. But that doesn't look very strong. I don't know if the crane can go there. But probably they're going to bring the crane and the crane, or maybe I'll drop. Oh, maybe that's what we can do. I can, I can uh, take my neck and drive in there because that should support the truck, just the truck because the crane is much heavier. And then they can come from the top and pick up all this without the neck. Uh, but yeah, these these guys, they say, uh, we didn't expect you uh, until noon. They said the crane is coming at noon. And, and I said, that's fine. Can you just sign my paperwork? He says, I, I said, you know, tomorrow is a big holiday in the States. And my factoring company, of course, they probably don't know what factoring company is, but I said, my company is closed tomorrow. I said, my factoring company is closed tomorrow. And the guy says, oh, yeah, we can probably sign your paperwork. My kind of guy, Nash Chilevic. So I give him my two bills of leading. Usually I have two sets, you know, two copies of my own that I make on my own computer. And then the broker quite often sends me a bill of lading. But uh, over there, uh, usually they don't specify the name of the carrier. They just use their own company name. And that's not good, right? Because if you're trying to get paid through your factoring company, they look at the bill of lading and like, okay, why, why are we paying you, Captain Sergey, for this? Like, the carrier is the broker. And so... If I don't have a choice, if I let's say my printer died or my computer died, I'll just I write my I I strike the uh, you know cover with some black black ink the name of the broker which is carry and I put my name because that's not right the the broker is the uh, third party that deals with freight charges right but the carry is me I'm the carrier they're not delivering the load I am. But this case, this time, yeah, the, the, I think the, the bill of lading was good. And so, like I said, I made my own, which clearly states that I'm the carrier. It has all my info, my cell. I, oh, and I said my cell phone. And I said, can I, since the crane is only coming at 12 o'clock, do you guys think I can drop my trailer and just bobtail across the road to get some breakfast? And that's what, that's what I meant about the miscommunication where you speak different languages like they they say yeah yeah and then one of the guys was leading me here the other guy disappeared but one guy was walking I was just driving following him in the truck and he stopped me here I had to leave the trailer because there's a hill in there and the front of the trailer was dragging so I stopped and he was doing something on the phone so I said so where do I go he stopped me like in the middle of this driveway right <laughs> some some forklift guy just tried to go past and he moved that blue barrel and he went this way but it's too narrow over there he cannot he like oh man he backed out go went this way but i don't know where to go because i think this is the spot this is the spot where they're gonna lift these units probably and put them on the roof or something i don't know or maybe they're just gonna put them next to the building but and I don't have the I don't have the phone numbers of these two guys, right? But they signed by they signed my paperwork, so now I have to sit here. And uh, I already sent everything to uh, to uh, my factoring company, and I sent a copy of the POD proof of delivery to to the broker. I said I'm waiting for the crane, but for all intents and purposes, this load has been delivered. I said, never received your revised uh, rate confirmation with the 75 bucks. I said, it's too late now. Don't worry about it. I said, buy yourself some flowers and cake. And they respond, 
the response was they said oh the broker is working on your revised confirmation and i said it's too late i'm sorry i said it's too late keep it for later I already sent my invoice and all the papers to my factoring company. Like, I don't want to redo everything and just for 75 bucks. But normally what I would do, right? If it was a big amount, let's say, you know, it was like a thousand dollars or something. You know, sometimes uh, you go there and the crane breaks down, right? It's not your fault. So you're sitting there for two days or three days and you charge them like, I don't know, 500 bucks a day, 1,000 bucks a day. If there was that big of amount, then yeah, I would probably, I, I would not agree to unload. I would tell them, okay, like I told one guy, I said, okay, please send me the revised rate confirmation as you promised when we changed the, the rate. I, 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 I won't be able to unload without uh, the rate confirmation and this guy types the re response he says you don't need the rate confirmation to unload go ahead unload and we'll send you the rate confirmation as soon as we can yeah right <laughs> no freaking way because once you once the thing is off your trailer that's it you lose you lose all leverage and now you're kind of like a beggar uh okay so is my is my uh revised rate confirmation coming anytime soon because uh, you know i need to send papers to my financial company forget it so boys and girls if they owe you some money and they promise to send you the revised rate confirmation never ever go to the consignee or unload before you get that like i would just go you know let's say here if I wasn't in a rush and tomorrow was not a Thanksgiving where all offices in the States will be closed, including my factoring company, um, I would just go across the street to the truck stop, you know, and say, hey, I'm at undisclosed location, but not too far from the consignee. We'll sit here till I see the rate confirmation on my, in my email, and then we'll go get unloaded. How does that sound? And of course, he would probably say, oh, you don't need the rate confirmation to unload. We'll send it to you later. No, that's not how it works. The same with the rate confirmation, right? When you book a load, sometimes they will say, oh, well, you don't have the rate confirmation. Just drive the, you know, thousand miles you have to the shipper with no rate confirmation. It, it's your load. We'll send you the rate confirmation. We just, we swamped here with, uh, with, uh, complaints from carriers so we'll get to you in a second and then you start driving and then after 500 miles the guy emails you and he says oh i'm sorry the customer found his own truck now now what you don't have a rate confirmation you drove 500 miles right now can you ask him for a truck ordered not used uh used for what Where's your rate confirmation, right? So never ever leave and start deadheading to the shipper unless uh, that's my rule. I never leave until I have the rate confirmation. And then if something happens, I tell them, um, you know, like 300 bucks, uh, let's say plus dollar a mile or something like that. You know, of course they're gonna go nuts because most brokers they just think it's like hundred dollars two hundred dollars but you know this is a heavy haul truck right i do heavy haul um so well everything is higher like the detention fee usually like i would never tell them 75 bucks but i talked to my uh, broker friend in alberta who mostly uh, 80 percent of his shipments are are buckets of paint like he ship he literally has one of his customers is constantly shipping paint like one skid here two skids there a couple of pails here and so i asked him for advice i said what do you think i should charge these guys for for one hour and he said oh 75 bucks canadian <laughs> i said i told them at first 200 dollars canadian per hour and he says, no, maybe that, that's probably too much. 75 bucks if it's one hour. He says, if it's uh, 
you know, two hours, maybe 150, you know, somewhere there. But I said per hour or total? He says total. So anyway. So yeah, and the money went. I sent the money yesterday to uh, to my accordion seller. Try to call him actually. He answers the phone. Very pleasant on the phone. And then we got disconnected because I'm sitting behind this humongous building. But... Uh, if the money didn't go through I will know soon but it's out of my account but this other guy I know from Quebec who also bought uh, accordion from this dealer in Moscow he says uh, uh, on the next day usually after you send the money he says the bank will call you because the bank there's like a compliance department and the bank will look at you know first like of course everything was done by the teller just at the counter in the bank but then all that goes to the kind of like a head office you know a big honcho who deals with international wire transfers and they will check everything make sure that uh, we didn't screw up anything and that the numbers are okay and uh, and he says this guy Francois from Quebec says usually they will call you just to warn you that if everything is good the guy is ready to push the button, enter. He says, once that's done, he says, you will not be able to get your money back, which is kind of like surprising because I know in Europe, in the West, if there's a mistake of some sorts, you can always get your money back. You can call the bank, but I, I'm guessing it depends on the bank, but you can, I, I know I, I, I dealt with one bank like that before where there was a mistake with the wire transfer and the customer just got back all the money. So yeah, there was a clerical error. Please return, return the payment. So, but anyway, my friend is busy. I tried calling him, but he owns a trucking company. And so all, both of his Verizon phones work in, in Russia, right? But he's dealing, I tried to call him. I couldn't hear him. And then I went over there. I thought, you know further away from the building and he's saying something so i i try calling him again and then he says yeah and he says sergey i was trying to tell you that i cannot talk right now he says my drivers are calling me and i'm like man i'm sorry but it was the connection was very poor he was saying i could only hear like every third or fourth word he was saying something i you but you know in russian uh call and I had no idea what he was saying. And so when I called him back, he says, I'll call you, you know, I just dealing with some, because you see time now is 10.36, local time, Eastern. So that's New York time. And his time is now, uh, what is it? 10 uh, plus eight, six, 6.30 in Moscow now, 6.30 in the evening. And, uh, and I told this, my dealer, my accordion dealer, I said, you should get a, f a phone call from uh, my friend uh, who's staying in Moscow now, and then he's gonna bring me, bring me the uh, the accordion. So anyway, what do you guys think? So that's the miscommunication I mentioned that I asked the guys since the crane is only coming at lunchtime, would it be okay if I drop the trailer and bobtail to the truck stop? And the guy says yes. And then when he brings me here, he doesn't say if this is the spot, not not the spot. He doesn't say anything. So I think it's 10:36 now. So basically, I'll have I'll have to sit here till 12. I might as well just you know disconnect the neck, disconnect the neck, and then drive around. But wait a second, how do I get back here? I won't be able to come this way. Maybe I can go on this side. So. So sometimes that's what is happening, right? So people don't expect you. You, you show up too early. But. I wanted to get it off my chest, so to speak, you know, off my trailer and send everything to my factoring company. And I did. And so now I'm going to be paid today at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Well, check this out. When I was leaving for my brunch, 
and I just dropped the trailer so I took the neck right when I was leaving I saw this guy sitting on the side on the side of the road where I went in first because they all gave us he has the same 170 uh, like building number 170 which is wrong because this is 168 and he was sitting there remember this all the crane um, you know and I'm thinking no that cannot be that's a that's too early so he was there like 10 30 no maybe 11 right and so I drew I went had my brunch at the at the truck stop where I want to go after this and then I'm coming back, I see the same guy, but now he sits in the, in the backyard there when I was parked at first, you know, when I showed up. So he moved closer. So I, I, I drove right next to him because he was sitting inside the cab. And I, said, <laughs> and I said, excuse me, sir, are you here to unload any AC units by any chance? And he says, yeah. <laughs> I said, you probably lost because I said, it took me an hour to find the place where I, I, I was supposed to unload. He says, yeah, I'm talking to... And I said, you know those guys over there? He said, you ever heard a name company like that? He says, yeah, I know them, but uh, I never, uh, I did not, I'm not working with them. He says, my contact is somebody else. And so, okay, I said, follow me. He says, okay. I said, I have a big AC unit. I'm pretty sure that's, especially if the address is the same, right? <laughs> Uh, a wrong address so he got the wrong address I got wrong address so it's not 170 it's because it's a very big property here you have to come through the gate right and so now we come here and the van is parked but the door is locked because of course this goes on the basically what they told me is that these things three more coming right they'll park them like this like mine pretty much you know take pick up this I, I move back or forward and they just drop it right there and three more are coming and then he says on the next day they're gonna uh, get a bigger crane because this one cannot move uh, pick it up you know take it to the roof because you need a much bigger uh, boom I'm guessing and um, a stronger uh, crane and so for now they're just dropping them here and so all these guys so I let him go first like this and that's why they made me park like this to the side they said to leave the room for the crane now we cannot find these guys you know I don't have their phone number. I gave him my credit card, my, my business card. I said, if the crane is here before, just call me. And they said, okay. And of course, they're working somewhere inside. So now I think I'll just drive around. This guy is warming up the crane. And um, I'll just drive around, see if I can lock out and find those other guys there I saw in construction heads. So I have to back out and go find them. So man, you have to do everything. With this load, I mean, what else can go wrong, you know? They they cannot even give the proper directions to the crane. The driver has to hunt for the crane. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> It's quite a challenge picking this up because they had to use a spreader bar otherwise they would damage the sides and so this pickup truck brought the big spreader bar in the in the trunk you know they're hooking it up and we're gonna be lift off in a few seconds but you see what happened <laughs> I was facing this way the guy maybe the I had to uh, back turn around and then back from the blind side in here because the plan is once they lift it they don't want to lift it over my cab so once they lift it once they lift it they're gonna make me go forward
that's what they're doing.